You know what's going on, Bob? Well, I saw the uh, red airplane uh, getting into place over there on the left, and uh, now that you mention it, you're right. There is another airplane uh, towards our right that's faced the opposite direction, and he's starting to roll now. Okay, well, that's okay. This guy over here is waiting, so I guess that's, that's, a, that's, that's a good plan. As the smoke good. comes on on this uh, white airplane with the red wingtips, he's off the ground and he's retracting the gear now. Yeah. Now, hey, wait, wait a, a minute. Okay, the red one's starting to go straight towards him. What the heck is going on now? What? Hey, wait, wait, wait. He's rolling upside down and... Whoa! Talk about communication failure in there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Yeah, communication breakdown, but oh, you know who that is. I know who that is. That's Bud Cranley in the red Yak 55M. And the gentleman to the left flying the Yak 18T is his son, Ross Cranley. The Cranley family is here at the 2011 Abbott Ward International Air Show. Now keep an eye on Bud's airplane. That's the red aircraft to your right. This is the Yak 55M, an aircraft designed and built for one thing and one thing only, and that is amazing aerobatics as Bud flips the airplane over its nose, tail for nose. Wow. That is called a crisscross step ski, followed by a tumble. Now look closely as he shoves the stick forward as we're looking at the bottom side of the airplane. As all the blood rushes to his head as he completes that outside split S as he rolls the airplane and continues to roll along the length of the show line. And it is really a true performer. And one of the unique things about this particular airplane is that the ailerons span almost the entire length of the wing. And that's what gives him such tremendous roll rates and aerobatic abilities, making it a great airplane for slow speeds as well, as you can see by the for us today. And diving into the left, here comes Ross Bradley, the Yak 18. Now, these aircraft both have the same engines in it. The M14P Russian engine, radial engines, both have the same machine power plants at the front, but very similar aircraft, both made by the Yakulev Design Bureau of Moscow, Russia. But the aircraft on the right, the white one, that is a transport aircraft. It's great because you can take it and a whole bunch of your friends go from here to Chilliwack for some expensive pie because it costs a lot to get there. What are they doing now? Watch this. Kick in hard right rudder, a little opposite aileron, and you got the uh, formation hammerhead turnaround. Now you're talking about these airplanes being slightly different than North American airplanes as the engine spins backwards. Or is it North American engine spin backwards? Well, we're not sure. They start to roll around each other. Bud around Ross, Ross around Bud. All the way down the shoreline as they wrap the smoke around each other. Now another thing that's unique about these two airplanes is the Yak-55 is controlled by a stick. The Yak-18T is controlled by a control yoke. It's like the steering wheel in your car or the yoke in your Cessna or your Piper. The other thing that's really interesting about the Yak-18, most aircraft have, oh, and they have retractable landing gear. It's usually run by electric motors or hydraulics. Same with the flaps, not on the Yakulev aircraft. They are run by pneumatics. There's an air pump in there and an air tank and uses air pressure to lower the landing gear, to raise the landing gear, and to control the flaps as well, and to start the engine. And of course, in these airplanes, hammerheads are always to the right because as, as I was mentioning before, the engine spin backwards. Ross Cranley, born in Red Deer, Alberta. Of course, his dad, the legendary Bud Cranley, cut very close to the wing of his son Ross, look as they float over the top. Ross followed in his father's footsteps, joined the Canadian Forces in 1985, getting his wings two years later, became an instructor on the Tudor jet in Moose Jaw. Now watch closely as the aircraft approaches the stage, they roll around in a great big barrel roll. Imagine, if you will, a great big 45-gallon drum standing on its side at center stage. Bud and Ross loop their airplanes right around the inside of that barrel as they pull back on the stick and the yoke at the 
Western end of the field. This is going to be a lead change on the half Cubanate turnaround. Watch closely now as Bud takes the lead. Now Ross is paying attention to his father's airplane and following very closely as they pull back up into the skies over Abbotsford. Over the top they go, floating in the straps, looking up through the tops of their canopies to fit, uh, find the horizon as they complete that great big Martin Stormer's loop in perfect formation. It almost looks like they're tied together, Roy. There's a big number two on the back of uh, Ross's aircraft. That's because he applied for and was accepted in the Canadian Forces Snowbirds Air Batting Team. Where he flew the number two position in the right wing in 1990 and in 1991. Well, Bud Bradley is also no stranger to the airshow circuit. He's been flying since he was nine years old. And his brothers were outside playing when they saw a tiger moth by plane fly to a landing on their uncle's farm. They ran to see the airplane and were amazed to find that the pilot was their father who had secretly earned his pilot's license. And from that point on, Bud and his two brothers were hooked on aviation. Canopy to canopy as they roll their aircraft around. Look how close they fly together. Bud Bradley in the red aircraft, Ross Bradley in the white aircraft, and there's the split. Bud joined the Royal Canadian Air Force in 1956 after earning his wings with the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. Flew the F-86 Sabre in Germany and was a member of the Canadian Gunnery Team. Let's go live to the cockpit right now as Bud Bradley dives in. Hey guys, you look fantastic up there. All right, you heard the call. Oh, yeah, inside, going. outside loop. Here they come. Bud is upside down with Ross struggling to catch up. And there's the call. Bud pushes forward on the stick. He's on the outside of this loop while Ross loops around him in the inside. Inside, outside, formation loop. Very tricky to do because Bud's aircraft hey, well, is the the big white airplane. Well, you're looking great up there, guys. Thank you very much. Hello, Abbotsford. Hello, everybody. Volunteers and anybody who may come here and see this great, wonderful national pride of Canada. We hope you're enjoying the show today. Uh, let's show you a little bit what about the transport category Russian Air Force to do. All right, we see it coming in. As he goes up, up, and then just rolls the aircraft into the floor, pull it back off the yoke. A little stick in there, it's a control yoke. Again, going up, and it's just going to flow over the top. Now, let's start heading towards the ground. Pull it back, going to roll the aircraft around. And come down onto the bottom. All right, kids, the smoke was hanging there a little better. What would you see? That's right, a great big number eight in the sky. Okay, just about 45 degree upline as he rolls the airplane there. A full roll on the 45 degree upline. Now watch closely as he holds back on the stick and step rolls the airplane. And now reverses the direction so that he dives for airspeed and brings the airplane right back into show center for his next career. It's all about communication with this formation axis. as it goes straight up into the blue. Now rolls the airplane ever so slowly. Stops it right about there. Falls back on the yoke. Reverses the direction in the reverse Humpty Dump maneuver. A great maneuver to get turned around. Trades an altitude for air Look at how tight this airplane flies as the experience is 4, 5, 6, G on that turn. Looking at otherwise great cross-country machine. That's right. That's the amazing thing about this machine. You can take yourself and your friends and go uh, fly here to Victoria, come back, and then go to a bunch of aeronautics. You bought that aircraft in Moscow, took it apart, put it into a shipping container, and it's in the so there is Bud celebrating 50 years in the air show industry.
Look at the tremendous roll rate of that airplane as uh, moisture comes off the tips of the propellers there as he spins the airplane over the top. Holding it, holding it, holding it. That's the torque roll, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Now he recovers the heavy end points down. The green starts to look awfully big in that windscreen as Bud goes off to the eastern end of the field. Now step rolling the airplane in a centrifuge type maneuver. Lots of power available in that aircraft and as I said earlier today, this airplane was designed for one thing and that is to win aerobatic competitions. Step rolling the airplane on the outside now as he flips the airplane over its nose once again. They make it all look all so easy, but they are working so hard for you today. They expend about enough energy in an eight minute routine as you would on the construction site for a full eight hour shift. Dealing with all those G-forces, and you need to be physically fit and uh, build up your G-tolerance so that you can perform these maneuvers. But later instructed on the T-6 Harvard in Red Deer, Alberta. He was selected to be the base solo demonstration pilot for the Harvard, which was the launch of Bud's illustrious career as an airshow pilot. He lives in Bellevue, Washington, flew for United Airlines until he retired in 1997. He has six children, of whom three served in the Canadian Armed Forces. Two of his sons flew with the Canadian Forces Snowbirds. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the west, that's to your right, as they enter the show box, Ross Bradley in the lead now as they roll their airplanes around each other. The formation barrel roll. Now Bud is in the lead. There's the changeover. Getting a look at the top side and the bottom side of those incredible airplanes. Ross continues to uh, have the smoke system on so that we follow his next maneuver as he flips around in a great big wing over to get himself back into the airshow box. Dives for airspeed again. Here he comes at show center now, rolls the airplane and holds it in a knife edge, giving you a look at the top side of the airplane. Most airplanes cannot do that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, unless you have an inverted fuel and oil system that continues to supply oil and fuel to the engine. Most airplanes, the engine would cap out right about there, and you would no longer be able to use your engine to power you through. Now, Bud, coming in from the left. Here comes Bud Bradley as he dives in, down on the 45. He's going to pull it right back there. Now, watch this. Look how tight he can pull this. Yak 55 M around. Very, very tight in the infield of the air show. Look at the airport area here. My oh my. Let's snap the airplane around. Look at this. Very difficult to do. Snapping, rolling the aircraft and keeping it in a 360 like that. Look on your right. Here comes Ross just above the ground in a night edge pass. Listen to the sound of those Russian radial engines pulling these aircraft through the sky here. Bud is upside down. He's going to slow it, slow it, slow it. He's hanging from the straps, turning that aircraft into a helicopter as he just holds it in the sky upside down. That's a great way to pick up a pencil if you drop your pencil and pull the airplane like that. And you notice, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, go really, really fast for some of their high energy maneuvers and they can slow them right down. And that's thanks to those great big wings allow them to do some of these incredible maneuvers at such slow air speeds. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, keep your eyes on the airplanes as they turn around, they rejoin, which in fact is a science in and of itself, that's rejoining right. uh, two airplanes like that. Now watch closely as the smoke comes on. Uh, Bud and Ross Grantley, father and son team. Now everything is all cockeyed here in what we call the crazy flight. Inspired by the Royal Canadian Air Force demonstration team called the Colby Box. Crazy formation is a right through. And boy, that is tricky to do, especially when flight formation. Everything all cross control. This maneuver was uh, demonstrated by the Goldilocks by flight instructors who wanted to demonstrate what it was like to fly with their, uh, with their students. 
Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Oh, wow. Ooh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, Bob, what's happening here? I don't know, but the Grandleys have got the airspace, but here comes some errant aircraft back into the airspace, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try to find out what the heck is going on here.